Hey everyone, welcome to the fourth lecture of AWS Organizations and Control Tower series. And in this lecture, we will try to focus more towards the best practices followed by landing zone. And one of them is service control policies. I'm not going to a deep dive into SCPs because there is a detailed lecture coming up in this series itself after completing the control tower demo because that's, that is very important topic and I want to give a dedicated time to cover SCP. I have covered one part of SCP as part of my demo as well in AWS organization. So you might got a fair amount of idea what I will be talking about in SCP detail video. But here as part of the best practices just wanted to cover up that SCP in general it's an org policy organization policy that you can use to manage your permissions in your organization. It can be applied to your account or OU level. And I have showed this as part of my demo in AWS organization. Now in this particular circular diagram, the intersection, I would say, uh, as you can see, we have an IAM roles, users, permissions, then we have an SCP, permission boundaries, and the intersection is basically your action allowed, right? So basically what I'm trying to say over here is, your organization is providing you a centralized governance system and management of multiple account with the help of AWS organization, right? But you can also use SCP to control or establish a control to all your IAM principles, basically your IAM users and roles, and they will be following that particular policy attached to it. This makes it easier for you to fine tune your strategy to meet the exact need of your company or whatever the rule you create as part of your strategy. That's where SCPs are very important. Now, if you see the flow, the flow happens in a way that first it will search for an explicit deny. Then it goes to SCP, whatever uh, policy that you define as part of your org or account structure. Then it goes to the permission boundaries because that's where we are playing around a lot. And finally, what kind of policy that you are applying to that particular role, user or principle as a matter of fact. Now, in terms of uh, what SCP is doing, it never grants permission. It can be attached or these are the facts about SCPs. It can be attached to your account or OU level, has the highest level of priority and by default, whenever you add your member account to organization, by default, you get full AWS access. And I have shown this in my demo as well, which is not denying anything. One of the best part, it supports condition. So based upon your condition, you can allow something, you can deny something like creation of VPC resources. So you can explicit deny the creation of VPC resources can be controlled from the organization unit and applied from the organization itself, right? From the master account or a payer account or a root account. So you can, you are getting a basically a centralized system to do everything. The second part, uh, which comes as part of the best practices are the guardrails. These are the high level rules for the additionally controlling and securing your accounts apart from your SCPs. SCP is one level where you can control most of the stuff and guardrails basically adding another layer of control or security on top of your account. As per best of my knowledge, I know like preventive and detective are the two set of guardrails what we have where preventive basically ensures the compliance of your account and because it disallows action that lead to the po policy violation. If there is any kind of policy violation is happening, it will disallow that action. On the other hand, detective also detects the non-compliance activity of your resources such as policy violation, but there is an additional factor that you are getting an alert to the dashboard. So that's what the guardrail in general are all about. Again, this is also protecting your member accounts as part of your landing zone best practices. So in terms of the career guidance of uh, how you implement the guardrails, so we have three set of options, mandatory, strongly recommended, if elective. Now, you can go for all three or based upon your requirement. So mandatory is obviously you have to be there. Uh, it is enabled by default and consists of must have rules. Rules will be there. Strongly recommended, again, these are uh, these two strongly recommended and electives 
are disabled by default but it's better if you are following the best practices you should go with strongly re recommended and elective is more of a it, it will be good to have there are like number of guardrails will get pushed out when you go with uh, AWS landing zone or control tower now in terms of the account strategy this is uh, again this is a public model but this is one of a model that I implemented for one of my client as well in past so I have taken this from uh, this documentation the use case of Amazon this is one of a blog from APN uh, site now if you see uh, from the first diagram of the landing zone that I showed we have a core account where we are having a separate security account separate logging account shared services network right we are controlling everything from the core account on the right hand side we have workload accounts where you are basically doing your production then analytics dev account sandboxes but everything is getting controlled from the core accounts with landing zone or control tower concept right now in terms of uh, what do you have in the master account you can run your organization that has to be there in place plus SSO plus any kind of uh, SCPs that you want to force it to work on all these uh, member accounts basically now why separation of the accounts needed right so for example let me take you a few years back when we used to have like one account with all the workloads network security logging then uh, your workloads and everything at one place dev test plot sandboxes we are doing everything at one account but it's not a good practice why because every kind of data you are placing into one account and if that gets hacked then it will be a problem for you to get a control back on that particular system right so it's always recommended you go with the multi-tier model where you can control security from one account where you can deploy your uh, guard duty IPS or IDS solutions then logging account is more of a whatever what kind of resources is doing what kind of activity in prod BU1 prod BU2 or dev or sandboxes you can send all the logging at a centralized location over here which will log each kind of data so for example let's say if my sandbox gets compromised or let's say if sandbox is getting over provision somebody is over limiting the number of resources then yes you can have all the logs in a centralized system and from there you can send that to a sim tool which basically give you a graphical presentation what kind of activity is happening on all the accounts right in terms of the shared services you can have a shared VPC over here which can be you know uh, shared across all these member accounts what is the benefit so this is more towards controlling like a hub spoke model uh, entry point is one and then from there you are redirecting the traffic which is more secure I guess as uh, hub spoke model is one of a best model I would say that I have seen where you get more security to the workload accounts and you're getting a better performance as well right plus network so network again you can use transit gateway so transit gateway is one of a cloud hub router where you can use it like a shared services model right uh, for example you don't need to if you are controlling everything from let's say network account or a shared services account right so you don't need to have a NAT gateway to have internet on your private network servers you can use transit gateway to route the internet traffic so if server wants to connect outside like outbound traffic then you can use transit gateway I have done the demo on transit gateway long back there is a network list that I'll be sharing in the description section if you're not aware of the usage please go through the transit gateway as well again these are not the new topics that I'm talking about we have already done this long back uh, I have done a detailed video on each of the network components each of the security components I have tried my level best to make you understand how these services works in a production world right 
uh, again shared services you can if you want to control your ci cd processes then yes you can do it from the shared services model plus manage ad if you want to have a manage ad uh, you can deploy in the shared services so like there are like a lot of use cases what we get in terms of shared services account and security and login that's why the separation is very important just to make your account much more secure much more beneficial approach to do that this is another similar kind of implementation that i did for one of my client this is uh, why i am showing this this is more of a ou structure that i have uh, again created this one is your master account again i am going with the log archive audit and shared services as part of the core ou the network account is not here because client never wanted to have a network account uh, they got rigid at certain point of time and i was like okay let's control it via separate account level right prod stage and dev as part of the businesses because uh, there was one of the requirement i would say not really they were correct at that point of time because uh, their businesses were dealing in a different space and they don't wanted to have a common network resources shared across their different businesses right although they are like pos they are like uh, ways to segregate that model so business a cannot interact with business b we can do that but we i i thought of implementing that way only uh, that helps them to you know control the entire official environment by themselves now but yeah and there was a separate log account audit account shared services so audit was more of a security controller for them and we were using the SSO in the master account that was configured with AWS organization, different services that we, we were using at that point of time with control tower and landing zone. Now on the right hand side, uh, generally what I suggest uh, basically for the workload accounts, you go with the, the business OU level, right? Create a workload or a business OU and create a sub OUs as part of your business like A, B and C. And you must have a sandbox OU plus forensics. Forensics are basically more of, let's say if something happened on one of the account and we want to do, you know, the RC and everything, then forensics comes into picture and you should always have a forensic account to do uh, the RC and everything. Don't do it on your production boxes or dev boxes or your stage boxes, right? Okay, so that is more of a, uh, landing zone account level the best practices what we follow next lecture is basically we are going to introduce control tower again similar concept but i just wanted to uh, cover all the concept of landing zone organization scps in general guardrails in general so wanted to discuss everything before kicking off the control tower mostly next video will be uh, more towards the concept and i will try to kick the control tower uh, setup as well because it takes somewhere around 30 minutes to one hour uh, to make it uh, proper accounts and everything. So place out a comment in comment section if you're facing any issue in terms of understanding the concept and I'll be there to help you. I'll see you in next lecture with control tower. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.